what basically a collection is. So you might have heard, heard a word called array, right? So collections are very similar to array. Means, let's say I need a list, I need a, something where I need to store names of student, 10 students name, right? So if it's stored in database, it would be stored in a table. 10 different rows has been there. Now I need to store only the names or any one particular parameter in my logic so that when I my code runs, it can iterate through that particular list and we can do my processing on that. So what we do when we talk of an array, array is something that is a predefined array, we say it's an array that can contain 20 elements. Now these 20 elements at zeroth place of an array we will store that okay these are the 10 field, these are the items that we store at that particular place. So that is basically called an array. So if you see at the backend structure, collection is nothing, they are classes only. Okay. So these are the classes which helps us in retaining multiple set of data. Suppose I have 20 records of same data type and I want to store that at a certain place in the memory of a processor, I can use these collections to store those elements in memory so that during the course of my processing, I can use them and do whatever logic I need to implement on them. There can be a different kind of it, but we come to a different kinds, but the basic definition of a collection is that collections are a type of classes only that helps us in retaining a large set of data of same data type. So generally in Salesforce, we have basically three different kinds of collections available for us. Means there are three different kinds of ways in which Salesforce provides us to store us a data. So one is they provide us sets, they call it as set. Another is they call it as a list and the final one is a map. Now the initial two, set and list are quite familiar to each other. There is not much difference between these two. But map is totally on a different line or a different parameters. So first we will try to look what basically a set is. First of all, before we go into that also, So this is how we call it as array. Let's say I have a student name to be stored. So what I will store is, I will store say Amit here, John, Waker, so what I am doing is, in this particular array called, I give it a name as student names. So what we have done is, in this particular array of student names, we have stored these different names. Now whenever I want to access any of this particular name, I can access, how I can access it, I can use this student and then I can use this particular parameter index. This is known as the index on which that particular element is stored. So this element is stored at an index 0, this element is stored at an index name. So if I want to access John name, I can just use student name dot one. So this is how the generic arrays was used. If you want to access a particular structure, let's say student John, so you can access it with the student name font. So this is how the generic arrays were getting used. Now in Salesforce what they have done is, they have done a wrappers on top of this arrays and given them certain more valuable structures into it. Now the first one that as I was just discussing was, that's known as a set. So now what a set helps in is it will control or it will contain only unique values. When I say unique values, it means if I try to store here a myth two times, it will not try to store it two times. It will just replace this a myth only. So if I'm trying to add a myth first and again I'm trying to add a myth into it, it will not create two line items in it. It will just replace on the previous value. So always a set will always have a unique value stored inside and then it would be an unordered list. Unordered in the sense as 
soon I am adding data into this list, into this set, it will not be in that particular order. Means, if coming back to the same instance, let's say I added a myth first. So the, initially this all was empty. Let's place them here. So now initially this is a set for me, let's say. Yeah, so coming back to sets, so what basically we were talking here was that now this particular set is an empty set for me. Now if I'm trying to add values into it, let's say I want to add a myth into this. So set is a kind of property that is not sure that it will definitely go into, it will go into zeroth plate. It can go to any place. Now if I put it here, it can put it like this also or it may be something like this also that these can be two interchange. If I'm putting a myth first, when I'm retrieving it, it doesn't mean that a myth would be coming at a zeroth place. So it's an, not a an proper order of the list. It can be coming at a second place also. Data within the set can be interchanged anytime. So we cannot rely on the order in which we are inserting the data. In the same order, we would be aiming to retrieve the data. So when we are reading the data from a set, it can be in a different order. We cannot depend on the order in which we can read a data from a set. That's why we say it as a set stored in unordered elements and it contains a primitive data types like string, integer or some S objects. So if we look into the basic syntax of a set, how it would be, it would be a set keyword and then we would be using the data type. Let's say I want to have a set of string. So I will mention set string, then the particular name so data type will look something like this. So you can give any name here and then it would be a new set and it would be a string. So this is how we are defining a set in Salesforce. Now if we say what all we have done here, if you try to collect your main basic initialization declaration concepts. So can you tell me if I just write it this, would it, is that fine or there is some wrong, something wrong in this or what is incomplete in this particular process here? It's correct. It's correct. So what, is there something missing here? The above one is the declaration and the below is the like definition. Oh. Alright. So that's the main point. So if I just use this particular stuff, set equal to set string and now try to you know just access this place somewhere. Let's say set dot add whatever I want to add. Let's say I want to add a name here, a myth. Okay. I'm just assuming it. So will it work? No. It will give me an error. What an error would be? null pointed exception, right? Because this particular set as of now is not initialized, it's just declared and is storing a null here as of now. So I'm trying to access a null and trying to insert a data into a null, it would be a null pointer exception. So either I can put it like this or whenever I need to use it before using it, I need to initialize it and then I can use whatever ways, what methods are available on this set. Now this is a variable that has been declared as well as initialized. I can use this variable down the line and then can add values into it. So there are different methods that are available. So for set, there is a simple add method available for you. So whenever you want to add something to it, let's say I want to store names into it. So I just keep on adding into this. Add Amit you know, so this way what we have done is we are able to add values into this particular set and finally when we want to retrieve it there can be other methods of retrieving it 